Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we saved the students of Grissom Academy and Jack. We can't forget about her. We had a very nice chat with Anderson at the end there. It is so good to see that he's doing okay. And now we're just going to quickly have a little run around the Normandy, just checking if anyone has any gossip, anything to say. You know, I, I would expect people to, you know, have some comment. I'm like, oh, it's good to see that Jax found her place. I, I would expect that. None of these people have any gossip. Boo. I want all of the gossip. I live for the gossip. And you have none for me. Much disappointment. When this war is over, I hope you find every race that sat back while we fled and get some payback. Yeah, that's a great plan. Follow war with more war. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Westmoreland. I'm like, oh yeah, the fighting stopped. What do we need more of? Fighting. That's, that's great. That's excellent, madam. Commander, there's a new message at your private terminal. Okay, good to know. I just got word. Everyone from Grissom Academy has arrived safely. We wouldn't have known about them if you hadn't caught the distress signal. Nice work. Thanks, Commander. Yeah, it, it really is. Good job, trainer. Commander. Good job, my dear. Oh, uh, forward, thank you. From Stephen Hackett, forwarded message from Kaylee Sanders, subject, thank you to Stephen Hackett. Hi, Commander. I didn't have time to thank you properly after you got us out of the academy and Admiral Hackett agreed to send this your way. While my students are out on duty, I'm doing what I can to help with the Prothean device. It's an amazing project, more advanced than anything I've ever seen before. Some of my more tech-minded kids are staying back to help out too, and watching them work, it's the future, Commander. This project will inform human progress for generations, and they'll have you to thank for it. All my best, Kaylee Sanders. Oh, oh, you're most welcome, Kaylee. Most welcome. Take care of Jack for me. She's one of my favorites. Please, please take care of her. And jo surely Joker must have something to say. Surely he must. So Jack's an instructor? I guess anyone who messes with biotic kids gets turned into a small stain on the floor and ceiling. Ooh, and that was Cerberus attacking the academy. Man, that must have been like Christmas for her. Anyway, nice job on getting them out of there. They were throwing out some impressive biotic power. Good. We could use some heavy hitters in the biotics department. It'll be good for them, too. Biotics face a lot of discrimination. Maybe if they save the galaxy, people will get over their issues. I didn't expect you to be sensitive about that. Hey, I'm just tired of them stealing the spotlight from people with actual disabilities. I break ribs if I sneeze too hard. Being able to move crap with your mind is not a handicap. Damn! Okay, okay, tell me how you feel, Joker. Oh, buddy, it, it wasn't just Christmas for Jack. It was Christmas for Naomi, too. Commander? It is good to know that Jack has thus far survived the Reaper invasion. I have been using memories of her attempts to insert additions into my reports to the elusive man. Most of them centered around inappropriate uses of the word cockpit. <laughs> oh, good on you, Jack. Good on you. Hello, Shepard. Hello, Edie. Oh, I, I like to imagine Jack screwing with the reports. Naomi would have been screwing with them too. Naomi would have been right there next to her going, yeah, Put that in there. Insert this. Okay, let's let's very quickly go check on the fish. I always need to check on the fish. Hello. Hello there. I love you. Now I'm I'm gonna be returning to the citadel soon. Hopefully they'll have more fish for me. And more uh, more models. Squeak indeed. Squeak indeed, little buddy. Oh, no, our room looks pretty decent. Okay, okay, yeah, good stuff. Okay, to the crew deck. <laughs> and again, I, I check everywhere. 
I can't help myself. I always have to check everywhere. Just in case. You never know. There might be banter in the crew quarters. Someone might want to check out the stars. If I if I don't check these these areas, I'll I'll just think about it. That's the thing. It'll prey on my mind. Like, but what if there was someone there? What if there was someone or something there and you missed it because you didn't check? So I I always have to check. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. And Liara. Fine, Commander. The information network terminal has been updated. Ooh. Remains of Reaper Destroyer. To avoid the risk of indoctrination, remote drones have been sent to study the salvaged remains of a Reaper Destroyer. The drones can dig under the outer hull, scanning circuits for technology that will increase the speed at which tech, biotic, and combat abilities can be fired. Alternatively, the Council has offered a Citadel-wide merchant discount for choosing the safer option and demolishing their remains. Oh. I do like saving money, but I also like pissing off the council. And if the council is saying, hey, we want you to destroy this, then I'm inclined to say, no, I'm going to take it for myself. I'm going to take the cooldown bonus. I, oh. Which, which would... Which would win out here? Naomi's love of money or her love of pissing off the council? The council are doing bugger all. The council are doing bugger all. Well, to, except for the Torians, to be fair, to be fair, the Torian counselor did say like, hey, if you do this, then we can help you out. Like, we we agree with you. We're, we're the warriors. We're the fighters. We see that shit is going down and we're, we're leaving an ally behind that is dishonorable. So we're going to help you out behind the scenes. Like, the, the Torian counselor has majorly redeemed himself in, in Naomi's eyes. But the, the Salarian and Asari counselors, bitches, both of them. They're doing nothing. That's that's two out of three. Yeah, we're gonna take the cooldown bonus. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> it was odd to see an entire academy just for biotic children. Don't Asari have biotic schools? Every Asari school includes biotic training programs. It's basic education. Still, those children in the academy were very impressive. I'm sure Jack's proud. Oh, more than likely. More than likely. She clearly loves those kids. Hello, Shepard. Hello, Liara. Uh, ooh. Prothean Notes 2186, Entry 2. I'm not sure what to make of Javik. I approached him while we were travelling to a different system, but he wasn't very inclined to talk. What little he does say concerns the Reapers and our possible failure. Is he simply a soldier mourning his people, or is it a fundamental difference in our cultures? Call from Kaylee Sanders to Jack. Jack. Hey, Sanders, checking in on the kids. Sanders. How are they, Jack? Jack. They'll do good. This is going to be long. I kind of got crap to do. Sanders. I wanted to tell you, I persuaded some Alliance friends to part with that biotic amp you and the children were testing at Grissom. You can pick it up on the Citadel. Jack. Damn, one of the L3X1s. You know how much shit I could tear up with one of those installed? Kaylee, I had an idea. Look after yourself. Jack, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks. Aww. Email from Kaylee Sanders to David Anderson. David, you won't get this for a while unless you find an extranet connection working on Earth. I've made it out to this weapon we're building. The device isn't even halfway complete, and it's the most and it's the most breathtakingly complicated piece of technology I've ever seen. I wish you could see this thing we're creating. It gives me hope. Take care for my sick ice. Anderson needs to survive this so that he can take Kaylee out for drinks. He needs to survive. He needs to survive because he's Anderson and I love him, but still. Hello, Shepard. Okay, okay. Good talk, Liara. Oh. <laughs> 
there there were so many people I hope survived this. So many people. One of the worst parts of this war is watching the kids react. If they're lucky, they grow up thinking the galaxy is basically a decent place. Some rough spots here and there, but for the most part, life makes sense. Now they find out it was all a lie. They wake up to see these things in the dark that just want to destroy everyone they ever cared about. If they survive, there'll be a lot of angry orphans out there looking for answers. Mm. Looks like we beat Cerberus again. Do you think the elusive man fires lieutenants over failures like this, or just lines them up against the wall and gets it over with? Oh, I'd, he probably kills them and then brings the bodies back as slaves. He probably does shit like that. He's a bastard. Fuck the elusive man. I wish they had had a Grissom Academy for Turians when I was growing up. Always wanted to learn how to paint. Now I mostly paint walls with Reaper blood. Not the same, but it's a living. Oh. So who needs their ass kicked now? Odd. Most people, Karis. Most people. So who needs their okay. ass kicked now? Okay. Well, it's. He it sounds positive when he says that. That's good. It sounds like you know maybe he thinks we have a chance in all of this. And shark quest. Any thoughts? Just reviewing some charts. Okay. Okay, good stuff. And again, no one in here. Oh, I miss... I miss Legion. I remember watching him dance. Again, and another person who I'm like, oh, I hope he's doing all right out there. Wherever he is, I hope he's doing all right. <laughs> million blasted from orbit. Adelaide, Australia is no more. New footage from Earth reveals the Reaper's plans to attack large industrial centers. Which cities are next? Find out inside the battle space. Oof. Commander. Alice. God, that is... Adelaide has been destroyed. Jesus, that... Yes, then. That's a yes. You think about it all the time. Commander. Commander. Donnelly. All propulsion systems are running optimal. Good stuff, Daniels. Okay. And again, I just have to check. I have to check. Oh, hello. You're right. Commander, I was exploring your ship. Find anything interesting? One of your crew lived in this space. There are traces of anger. That was Jack. Anger was her specialty. Traces of her pain are still present. I'm told she sought revenge against Cerberus when she was here. A goal you helped fulfill. I hope you will do the same for me. At least I have better quarters. Hey, this is cozy. I think this is nice. This... The, the game is just encouraging me. The game is just encouraging me. Go into every single room every time you explore the Normandy. There could be people that I get. You really shouldn't. You shouldn't do this to me, game. During our fight against the Reapers, we had no time for teaching the young anything but war. Okay. Only the foolish mourn the loss of innocence. It is inevitable. The galaxy has never rewarded the naive. Commander. Okay, jump once more. Commander. Okay, there we go. Okay, Javik. Okay. He's being emo in the basement. Good for you. And now, that, that bears the question. Could there be someone hiding in Javik's room? Nope. Still, you know, we, we might as well just check out his stuff whilst he's elsewhere. Why not? God, I can I, I just have this image of grunt in my head. You know, he comes back and he's just like, Mom, you changed my room. How could you? 
Commander, I feel terrible about leaving you on Grissom Academy like that. I did order you to leave. Yeah, it doesn't make me feel any better. I'm just glad it all worked out. Supplies are holding out. Okay, that's good. Ma'am. Okay, Cortez. Do, do, do. I think that just leaves Vega, if I remember correctly. What do you want to, dude? That Jack is a mean SOB, but kind of hot. If he's like that sort of thing. And she, she is. She is very sexy. She is very sexy. I'm not going to deny that, but James, she could rip you apart. She could and would rip you apart, buddy. So, Anderson and Sanders. That's quite a couple. Huh. My dad's last name is Sanders. No relation. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one shipping them. You have excellent taste in ships, James. Ready when you are. Ready when you are. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. And I, get, I, 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 have, I have to run everywhere. I have to. I have to. There's no one, no one chilling out back here. Okay. Okie doke. There we go. That didn't take me too long. Okie doke. Good stuff. And canine. Canine. Let me praise you. Let me praise you. Hey there. Oh, you're lovely. Your lovely little robo dog. I love you. Mm. Okie doke. And with that, we don't need to worry about feeding the fish because we have the VI feeder thing. We've spoken to everyone. Yes, okay. Now then, I think my plan is... First things first, are there any other systems here? Okay, no, this is it. And there was... Yeah, there's nothing... There's nothing in this area. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff to do at the Citadel. However, I think I think what I want to do is I, I want to explore this cluster. I want to explore this area. So just, just Hades Gamma and Kite's Nest. Then we're gonna head back to the Citadel and we're just we're just gonna check over each area. Like I said, I, I want to leave this to last. That's my aim here. I don't want to miss out on anything. I want to get everything done. Okay. I found something. There we go. Okie doke. Now then, let's see. What do we have? Speculus. Speculus is a relatively large rock and ice planet, known for its deposits of magnetically active periclase, which interferes with some starship scans. Conspiracy theories and pulp adventure claimed... I, I did read that right, I'm sorry. Claim that secret fortresses are concealed under the ice. The Reaper invasion force appears to have passed the planet by, which is likely the only insight that organics will ever have into the Reaper's literary taste. Orbital period, 21.0 AU. Orbital period, 96.5 Earth years. Radius, 7,594 kilometers. Day length, 49.9 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, negative 194 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.18 G. And who is on this ring? You over here. Ilum. A tiny rock and ice planet that is now missing much of its ice, Ilum was part of a grand project by a hegemony, di hegemony dictator known as Grebosh the Mad. His aim was to drop enormous chunks of Ilum's ice on the surface of otherwise uninhabitable desert planets in the hopes of creating sustainable lakes and seas. Wiser heads than he pointed out that diverting a comet was more plausible, but Grabosh executed those who disagreed with him. Grabosh's career was surprisingly long given his loose grip on reality, mostly because his projects employed large numbers of Batarians. Today, Island lies abandoned. Hege hegemony spy drones still orbit the planet, but it is doubtful anyone on Karshan is paying attention to what data they send back. Orbital period, 11.3 AU. 
orbital period 38.1 Earth years, radius 2,179 kilometers, day length 42.9 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure trace, surface temperature negative 176 Celsius, surface gravity 0.06 G. And one in, that would be you, Varouche. Varouche is a hydrogen helium gas giant named for an ancient Batarian monarch whose empire spanned continents. He had such a penchant for mating that 0.6% of modern Batarians claimed to trace their lineage to him. The planet's moons are named after his many recognized wives. The largest, Bira, concealed Prothean ruins that helped the Batarians develop FTL travel. It is a Batarian point of pride that, since the ruins were damaged by earthquakes, they had less information to go on than other spacefaring species. The Reapers have destroyed all obvious military outposts in Varusha's orbit. The Batarians' notorious secrecy, however, may have allowed concealed subterranean facilities on Varusha's moons to survive. Orbital distance, 5.4 AU. Orbital period, 12.6 Earth years. Radius, 53,150 kilometers. Day length, 11.4 Earth hours. And what do you have? And where? Okay, down here, aha. Uh -huh. Yoink. Okay, what, what be it? Ooh. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Weapon upgrade kit, okay. Ooh. Excellent. Don't mind if I do. And I'm going to assume this is... Yeah, it's always a fuel depot. It's always a fuel depot. Kashan, flipping heck. Kashan, the Batarian homeworld, is wrapped less in mystery than in outright lies. Batarian propaganda claims the world has 15 billion inhabitants and an economy that rivals the Asari. Although the legal slave trade does boost the Batarians' profits somewhat, Citadel sanctions have left a paper tiger of an empire, one that fights rivals through deniable terrorist actions rather than the wars of its heyday centuries ago. The Reapers will likely be the death blow to that empire. Almost no information has escaped Kashan since the Reapers destroyed the Combois, but Batarian refugees say that resistance has created a bond among the commoners. If a new government can rise from the, from the ashes, that bond may sustain a new Batarian society. Orbital distance, 1.45 AU. Orbital period, 1.7th years. Radius, 5,222 kilometers. Day length, 18.5 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 0.62 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 33 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.96 G. And somewhere over here. Pillars of strength. Okay, hang on, there was mention. I think there was mention of the Pillars of Strength. I think... I have in my head it was, um... Oh god, where, where all the Batarians are. In the docks where all the refugees are kind of hanging out. I think there was a preacher talking about like, oh, don't give in, don't give in to despair. You know, remember the Pillars. I think... I think I remember hearing that. Desda. A dwarf planet, Desda was explored in the beginnings of the Batarian Space Age and mined for its unusual occurrences of uranium, which was rare on Kashan. Whether the planet has been completely mined out is unclear. Accurate data on the planet was lost after a power struggle within the Batarian government. The Reaper attack has further worsened the information flow. Orbital distance, 0.8 AU. Orbital period, 0.7 Earth years. Radius, 1,528 kilometers. Day length, 68.6 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 16.28 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 322 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.28 G. Okay, lovely. Now, I saw... Okay, find the artifacts over here. 
Yep, let's... Oh, this is... Oh, dear. I hope... I hope... Signal confirmed. Okay, I'm hoping that that over there... Is a whatchamacallit. A fuel depot. Okay. Oh, that's... Why? Why, pray tell? God damn. Varna. A large rock planet, Varna is covered in prodigious amounts of dry ice, leaving only thin traces of gas for its atmosphere. Uranium deposits drew Batarian miners to Varna long ago, and when that was exhausted, they moved onto its magnesium. The Reapers have exterminated the colony here, punching holes in the domed cities and leaving its occupants to, to asphyxiate hot damn. Bloody hell, that is savage. Orbital distance, 13.3 AU. Orbital period, 44.4 Earth years. Radius, 10,925 kilometers. Day length, 41.4 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, negative 192 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.39 G. Come on. Show me... Show me some artifacts, please. I need it for guns. Black market artifacts, lovely. Excellent. And what do we have here? Azamir. Oh, that's a nice name. I might nick that. So if if you've never watched my uh, my Dragon Age Let's Plays, all of my canon characters share names that have the same starting letter. So, you know, take take Mass Effect, for example. We have Naomi. When I play Andromeda, that character will have a name that starts with N. For Dragon Age, we have Artin, Amelia, Ionor, and Azamir. I like that. I may just nick that. Mm -hmm -hmm. Azamir is a hydrogen helium gas giant whose gravitational pull perturbs the orbit of two nearby asteroid fields, adding momentum so that asteroids shatter during collisions rather than ac accrete. I do not, I am not familiar with this term. I can guess what it means. You know, so that asteroids shatter during collisions rather than, you know, shattering into the planet. Like, I can guess what it means, but I'm not familiar with this word. Accrete into planets. Debris from a great battle can be seen here. Batarian naval ships, merchant ships, and a few Reaper destroyers have been pounded into wreckage. It appears that the Batarian Navy tried to defend the Helium-3 refueling stations, giving civilian ships time to escape the system. Orbital distance, 3.6 AU. Orbital period, 6.2 Earth years. Radius, 53,592 kilometers. Day length, 15.5 Earth hours. And just you, close to the sun. Uh, that... That, that wouldn't be Urjabat. Ur Urjbat, maybe? Urjbat was a wealthy Batarian colony, rich in farmland, minerals, and manufacturing infrastructure. Little recent information about it has escaped this section of space, but radio traffic from the planet paints a dire picture. Indoctrinated Batarian officials are offering rewards for every living body brought to the labor camps, slave or not. With the state apparatus at their disposal, Reaper units are coordinating house-to-house -house hunts for resistance members and paying those who turn them in. Government propaganda dismisses the smell of the processing ships as a natural byproduct of Reaper energy consumption. Columns of dust from annihilated cities tell the story of those who disobeyed. Orbital distance, 0.9 AU. Orbital period, 1.0 Earth years. Radius, 4,187 kilometers. Day length, 59.0 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 1.37 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 41 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.76 G. 
Okay, look, that's that's uh, Urshbat. Uh, another another name that I'm like, oh, I might nick that. <laughs> okay, I think I hope. Come on, make it. You can do it. You can do it. A hey, nice. I found something. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff in anything. Yeah, I'm going to assume that this is another. Oh, we we needed this. We needed this fuel. Okay, it's only a hundred, but that that will get us. That will get us where we need to go. Oh. I'm pretty sure we refuel to full when we go to the Citadel, in which case I might go to the Citadel sooner than I planned. Uza. Uza is a methane-rich gas giant. The wreckage around the Helium-3 infrastructure is unusual. It looks as if fleeing Batarians tried to sever the collection equipment and take it with them when they were attacked. No Reaper ships, functional or otherwise, are immediately detectable, suggesting that the Batarians may have actually turned on each other. Orbital distance, my time is about to go off. There we go. Orbital distance, 18.0 AU. Orbital period, 58.7 Earth years. Radius, 37,445 kilometers. Day length, 14.0 Earth hours. And then, okay, all the way at the back here, what do you have for me? On a deck? A deck is a brutally hot and wet garden world covered with molds and lichen analogs. It has many viruses and bacteria lethal to Batarian physiology. The hegemony colonized a deck early in its expansion, but few of the colonists wanted to stay. The result was domination by a class of landed slave owners. A small cadre of well-paid engineers and skilled laborers kept the planet's mechs and infrastructure functioning. Alliance estimates put the planet's Batarian population at just over six million, but that number has likely fallen since the Reapers arrived. Orbital distance, 4.5 AU. Orbital period, 7.3 Earth years. Radius, 5,075 kilometers. Day length, 58.0 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 0.45 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 60 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.78 G. And what do you have for me? Okay, up here. Where? Where? Show me, please. Where are you? Come on, you're around here somewhere. Yeah, I'm following the thing. Okay, why was it telling? I, I guess the closest must have been directly over the top. Okay, credits recovered. Nice. Lovely. And just you two left. Kloss. Kloss is a rock planet with almost no atmosphere to speak of. Consequently, the planet retains fairly little heat considering how close it orbits to an energetic star. The relatively mild temperature makes Kloss attractive for robo-mining, with an emphasis on platinum. The planet also has an abundance of sodium oxide used in the manufacture of lye, but profit margins on that compound are thin by comparison. The Reapers have destroyed the orbital stations surrounding Kloss and cut the strands of the space elevators that earlier generations of Batarians used to transport goods to orbit. Orbital distance, 2.3 AU. Orbital period, 2.7 years. Radius, 10,116 kilometers. Day length, 64.3 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, 88 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.26 G. And Eska. Oh, no, 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 let me in. According to Batarian propaganda, the Batarian population exceeds the council races. The Batarian military is the most powerful, and the Batarians' unlivable hothouse planets are the hottest and most unlivable. Their best proof of this last point is Eska, which closely orbits the scorching yellow white star Untrell. Eska's nitrogen heavy atmosphere might once have held oxygen but if so, it burned off long ago. Even robo-miners don't care for Ezka. Although some modern mining equipment can withstand the heat, the machinery still gets stuck in the soup of molten light metals on the planet's surface. 
Reaper presence near Ezka seems light. Scans reveal wreckage orbiting the planet, likely destroyed hegemony surveillance drones. Orbital distance 1.2 AU. Orbital period 1.0 Earth years. Radius 6,372 kilometers. Day length 30.0 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure 78.43 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature 1,144 Celsius. Surface gravity 1.33 G. Okay, good stuff. And that, wait, did I get you? Uza, yes I did, okay. Okay, lovely juggly. In which case is that? Okay, that is everything. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, yeah, it, it is time to leave. It is time to leave. I'm gonna head to the Citadel. And then I am gonna bring today's episode to a close. Okay, excellent. In the next episode, I believe we learned that Miranda wanted to speak to us, so we'll go have a chat with her. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.